reproduction and inheritance. With this, the idea is to look at children, babies, how they're conceived, born, as well as looking at the DNA and the uses of DNA uh, later on. Reproduction and inheritance. The first thing we need to talk about is are the sex cells. In a male, it's called a sperm. And it actually looks like a little tadpole, tail to help it swim, and very little cytoplasm, just a large nucleus. The head is designed to be able to break through into the egg. Female sex cell called an egg. This is the largest cell in the human body. And again, there's plenty of cytoplasm there to help after fertilization for the egg to survive until implantation. The sperm is made in the testes. Well, the egg is made in the ovaries. Fertilization occurs when the egg and the sperm nucleus fuse together. This actually happens in the oviduct, not in the uterus, as people would think. The fertilised egg, now called a zygote, travels along the oviduct until it gets actually into the uterus where it implants into the uterus wall. That's where it's going to stay for the next nine months. The uterus lining, which has now become what's called the placenta, This is where the mum's blood and the baby's blood, they never meet, but they do allow food, uh, waste and oxygen to be passed between the two. But the bloods never meet. If they meet, then it would be probably terminal for the baby. The baby is kept safe inside the mum in what's called an amniotic sac. Right? This is filled with fluid and when you hear the term the mother's water had broke, this is what has broke, the, what's been released. The water is there to keep to stop the baby getting any knocks. As well as useful substances like oxygen, food, uh, and waste products like carbon dioxide and other ways of the baby being passed across the placenta, you can also get un un well, unwelcome materials, things like drugs, uh, alcohol, nicotine. Things that are not there that you don't want. These are things that will damage the baby and can and are best avoided. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And no, you do not need to be able to spell it. Just DNA will do at this point. You should understand the humans have 46 chromosomes. 23 from mum, 23 from dad. So that's 23 pairs. One of each type gets from each pair. The way it's worked out is DNA make genes which make chromosomes. 
And these are usually described as X's. One from each parent, with the sex ones being X, X, or X, Y, girl or boy. DNA has many uses. Think of Jeremy Kyle, think of finding parentage, think of what's called DNA fingerprinting and forensic. So you've got parentage. Think of Prince Harry and who's his father? Is it Prince Charles or is it James Hewitt? You've got forensics, whereby a sample can be traced back to a certain individual and then that can be matched against material found at crimes. You've got things like genetic engineering, whereby people's genes can be altered while they're still basically in the womb and maybe diseases lost that they would have been, that they would have suffered from. Okay, you've also got to think of that there's problems with all this because it could also be abused. 